Are you a small business owner who did their employees' paychecks manually last year and you're gearing up to do their T4s? Are you a little bit intimidated by the process? You're not alone. And is CRA's web forms really that difficult to use? Not at all. Hi, my name is Naomi and I'm the Happy Bookkeeper. And today I'm going to visually show you how easy it is to use CRA web forms to manually upload your employees' T4s. It's free, there's no software to purchase, and it's perfect for small businesses who have one to five employees. Now with CRA web forms, you can upload much more than five T4s, up to 100. The reason I say that it's perfect to one to five employees is after about say 10 employees, doing payroll manually does tend to take quite a bit longer and doing these individual T4s manually does take longer. So I say around then it's a good time to invest in some payroll software or the payroll add-on to your bookkeeping software or an online service provider. The benefit of this is direct deposit, automated CRA remittances, the T4 is done for you at the touch of a button, ROE is done for you at the touch of a button. So definitely it is a good investment the more employees you have. But if you only have a handful of employees, doing payroll manually is a great way for small businesses to save money. Uh, if you have between five and 10 employees, you can go either way, depending on, you know, who you have doing your bookkeeping and how much spendable money you have for those softwares. In today's video, I'll be illustrating just the basic T4s, um, that is wages, income tax deducted, CPP deducted, and DI deducted. Um, other benefits aren't discussed in today's video. So if your employees have a car allowance, other benefits like medical benefits that you're paying on their behalf, RSPs, similar things like that. Um, that is not addressed in this video. It's just the basic T4 with the basic deductions. In today's video, I'm using an Excel template filled with example data. This Excel template not only adds up each employee's totals, their total income, their total income tax deducted, total CPP and EI, um, but it also shows the monthly source deductions owing to CRA. So it's great to use throughout the year to track your payroll. If you're a small business owner who has paid your employees manually by using CRA's online payroll calculator and you've diligently printed out the paperwork and filed it away but have not yet totaled up the income and deductions, feel free to download the Excel template from my website and plug in the information from the paperwork into the spreadsheet to find your employees' totals. And you can use a fresh copy to track the current year so monthly and yearly totals are quick and convenient. To get started, you want to make sure that you have everything you need. Um, so you want to make sure that for each employee, you have their name, you have their SIN number, and you have their mailing address. Um, if you don't know their current address, do their last known mailing address. If you don't have any address, which you should have their address, don't let that stop you from uploading the T4s um, because you have to upload them by the deadline address or not. You can't do it without their SIN number though, so you really need to make sure you always get that when you initially hire somebody. You wanna make sure that you have all of their earnings tallied up for the year and all of their deductions tallied up for the year. So everything you've deducted for each employee for income tax, CPP, and EI. The other thing you'll need is how much you've paid in remittances in regards to that year. Um, remember, your December payment is made in January, so take that into account. Um, if you don't know how much that is, um, you can still file your T4s, just assume that what you've paid is what the deductions are, and if you're wrong, CRA sends you a letter and saying, no, 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 you didn't give us enough, give us more. But don't let not knowing what your remittances are stop you from filing your T4s on time. There is a late remittance penalty per T4 per day that you're late, so don't let that stop you. But it is good to have. Also make sure that you know your business number, very important, um, because your payroll account is your nine digit business number with the tail RP, P for payroll, 0001 at the end. And uh, now if you have CRA My Account, um, you do not need a web access code. You can log on to your 
CRA My Business account online and you can use web forms directly. Now, if you don't have a CRA My Business account, which they're very useful to have, um, you just go online, you go to CRA My account, go to set it up, but it does take a few weeks because then they mail you an activation code to confirm you are who you say you are. So if you don't have a couple of weeks to set that up, you can upload your T4s using CRA web forms with your access code. So that is something that if you don't have CRA My account, something that you're gonna to wanna to have ready to go when you go ahead and start your T4s. Now, if you don't have a CRA My Business online account, uh, you'll just need to use a web access code to file your T4s online. If you don't have your web access code, don't worry, you can get it online a couple different ways actually. So go ahead and Google Web Forms CRA and you can see there's a few different places to go. We're going to click Filing Information Returns Electronically, T4s. And here it gives you the two options for filing T4s online, either with uh, internet file transfer. Uh, this is a file that is generated by software, uh, either payroll software or bookkeeping software, such as QuickBooks. Or we can use web forms, which is basically manually doing it employee by employee, which is what the video is about today. When we click web forms, it says, hey, if you're not going to do this, you know, through CRA My Business account, you're going to need a web access code. Do you have it ready? If not, click here. And here it is letting you know that you're going to need your account number. Now, this is your business number, the nine digit business number, but also to denote that it's the payroll account of your business number, it ends with RP0001. That's P for payroll. So that's your payroll account is your nine digit business number plus RP0001. Um, return type, so T4s. And from a field from the last T4s you filed the year before. Now, of course, if this is your first year filing, you're not going to have that. So they're like, okay, well then just your account number and the date that you started your payroll account up, which you might not have either. And we'll address that in a moment. So you say, okay, I agree. And you can go ahead and click whichever one is applicable to you. It's very easy, and then you can just put in your business number right here, one, two, three, four, five, you know, your nine digit, and then RP0001. And then if you know the date, if you have that form somewhere, so if you're a new business, you might actually have a letter from CRA saying, congratulations on opening your payroll account as of, you know, whenever that is. Um, you can go ahead and put that in and hit next. And what that would do is it would say, hey, so your web access code is 1234. And the good news is that that web access code is good for every single year moving forward. It's not going to change. Just keep that somewhere special, like in your password file or somewhere that you're not going to lose it or your payroll file. And as long as you are doing this, um, the uploading online using your web access code, you're going to have that for perpetuity. Now, say you don't know this information. Well, the next thing you can do is really easy. You can just contact CRA. Um, you can give them a call. Their phone number is 1-800- 959-5525. Go ahead and uh, give that number a call. It's the CRA Business Inquiries line. And um, when I say you, it uh, needs to be somebody either authorized on your business account or you, the owner who started that business number up. And uh, when you give them a call, they'll need to confirm you are who you say you are. And of course, to do that, they wanna know your name and your phone number um, and the business number, obviously, the address and name of the business. Um, and they're gonna ask you some things like, you know, something else to identify that you know what's going on. Like, you know, how often do you file GST or whatever? And they'll work with you. And finally, once you've proved who you are, and I say, finally, it doesn't take that long. Um, they'll say, all right, and your web access code is one, two, three, four, or whatever they say it is. So 
Not so hard to go ahead and get your uh, web access code. Oh, just a quick hint, if you are calling um, that 1-800 number that I give you, as soon as you hear them say, you know, thank you for calling CRA on the recording, just hit star and uh, it'll just put you right away in line to speak to a representative. And if it says that their lines are busy, um, go ahead and just hang up and dial again until their lines aren't busy. And sometimes it can happen first time, sometimes two or three tries, but it's usually pretty quick and the hold is usually like less than two or three minutes. So it's actually a pretty easy way. So let's say we've got the web access code and we are ready. So we're back on this disclaimer for web forms and we say, I agree. Now here is where we're gonna put in that business number, 9787, like just, you know your, your business number and then RP0001 and then you go ahead and put in one two three four and then you say next but before we see what happens next let's see what happens when we log in using CRA my business account and uh, here we are clicking CRA my business account we scroll down CRA login not the partner login Then all we need to do is put in our user ID. Of course, I'm using a gray to cover the actual information um, because I wanted to go right in and show you what it looks like, but we don't want to show any information that you shouldn't be seeing. It's as easy as that. We'll log in. Always says when you last logged in. And here is the main page. You see, we can see when we last filed our GST returns, what we filed, what we owe for GST. Very helpful. Um, payroll is also here. So see how it's the RP. We're filing a return. So that's a T4 annual return. And we're going to be using web forms. Now, this is the page that we would have come to if we use the web access code and click next what I was talking about a little earlier on this is where the stories converge we're gonna start our annual t4 re information return uh, we start by putting in the business number and then following it with RP 0001 that denotes that this is the payroll account associated with our business number and we're saying we're going to be doing a T4 information return. There are various information returns that you can file using web forms and it's um, the first one that we're doing for this year that we're filing for. We're not amending or changing one. And then from here we choose that it is 2017 that is the tax year that we're filing this information return for. Payer name that is the business now remember if you're a sole proprietor you are the business so um, there's two lines I would suggest putting first of all put the operating name and then put the business owner's name like I said you are the business if you are a sole proprietor next is pretty easy we're putting in the address of the business no spaces as you can see it's showing you how it would like it for the postal code there the person to contact, you can either put the business owner's name or the person actually preparing the T4s. And then their telephone number to contact that person who's preparing this. No space is required on that telephone number. Now at this point we're going to click next and it's going to take us to filing the T4s. We're going to start with Felix Potvin. Um, right here I'm pulling up his um, totals for you to see where we're going to be pulling those from. Uh, on the screen here I'm putting in his social insurance number and his address, again blocking out the information because it's um, a fake guy. Um, put in the postal code. Now we're getting ready for the meet. We're putting in the province of employment and here we're putting in the employment income. You can see that I'm getting the employment income as the total of the wages or earnings or whatever you'd like to call it here from the spreadsheet. That includes vacation pay and bonuses and anything of the sort. Um, next, I'm looking at the total for the CPP. It says CPP contributions, but that is, of course, the total CPP that you have deducted from his 
checks, and I'm also putting in the total EI deducted, so EI premiums. And next we're doing the income tax deducted. Um, you might notice that here I'm putting in the EI insurable earnings, but I actually forgot in the recording of this to fill in the CPP pensionable earnings. Um, I will get to that later on in the video because it makes me go back. Now you might be asking what the CPP pensionable earnings is and what the EI insurable earnings are. That is um, not all earnings are subject to EI, that is they're not insurable, or CPP, that is they're not pensionable. Um, part of one of the reasons is that there is a maximum amount that you uh, are paying CPP on and EI on for as an employee. The CPP max earnings in 2017 is 55,300. Anything over that um, is not subject to CPP. Also, the EI max earnings for 2017 is 51,300 and um, no EI is charged after that. Uh, if you wanna know what the max are for the year, whatever you're working on, just Google CPP max earnings or EI max earnings and it lists what it has been for every year because it does change every single year. Um, if you have deducted more CPP or EI than you should have, um, I'm not going to address that in this video, but feel free to call CRA. Um, they're super helpful into helping you figure out what you need to do in the case of that. Another uh, example is that if you are the owner of the business and you've decided to give yourself like a wage and deductions, um, your wage is not subject to EI because it's not insurable. You can't lay yourself off. Um, also, if you are the wife of the owner and you're taking a wage, the husband or the spouse, you know, maybe the wife owns it, also not subject to EI because it's not insurable. And it might even go as far as maybe the children if they're working in the business. Um, at that point, you're gonna wanna have an EI rulings. Again, I'm not gonna go too much further into that. Um, one extra thing to talk about CPP pensionable earnings is if you've got a, an older employee, say, you know, over 65, um, if they're over 70, you don't uh, deduct CPP, but if they're between 65 and 70, in order to not deduct CPP from their check, they do need to fill out um, an election to stop for those years. It's called a CPT30. So just Google CPT30 and I'll take you to the form and give you instructions on how to handle that. So in the case of Felix Poffin, um, his earnings are below the um, max earnings for 2017. Not only that, he is not a son or a spouse or he's not too old. So um, his insurable earnings are all of it. And uh, this is most usually the case. And his CPP pensionable earnings is all of it. That is all of his earnings for the year. So we're gonna put in this uh, 43,264 again in the EI insurables box. And we should have been putting it in the CPP pensionable earning box as well. So those are the basic deductions that we're discussing in today's video. There is one more box or that uh, you need to be aware of. That is number 28, if they are CPP or EI exempt. And I just spoke about that. Um, and of course, if it is a business owner or a business owner's spouse or somebody who's over 70 or filed their CPT 30, you can say that they're CPP exempt or EI exempt. And then it won't give you a message saying, ah, you should have put CPP and EI in. Um, and again, we're just tackling the basic uh, T4, so all of these are not applicable. See what happens when I click validate and continue though. Boop! Correct the error and it highlights it and it's like, um, he wasn't CPP exempt and you didn't put anything in here. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that. Um, I was going to say that I did it to show you, but truth is I actually forgot while I was actually doing it. <laughs> oh, here we go. You can see it liked it. Everything looked good and we have Felix set up and ready to go. Um, next one I'm gonna do is Doug Gilmore, but I just cut this portion out because it's basically the same thing all over again. Validate and continue, I remembered this time. And here you can see that we have both of the um, T4s, both employees in, and in today's example, there's only two. So we're done, almost. Now we have to do the T4 summary. That's what we click next. 
Now on this page, CRA's boxes are gray and I've used blue to, to block out the information um, because this is not a field that you can type in uh, where I've put the blue over. And uh, that's because CRA's website has gone ahead and added up the employment income of both of the employees, it adds up to 88,691.20. And as you can see from our annual totals, that matches what we have, makes me feel good, no typos. Um, also, it's added up that the employee's CPP contributions are 4,043.52, um, which means that the business owner owes an additional four thousand because it's a dollar for dollar every dollar the employee is deducted and pays the employer matches uh, for EI it's not dollar for dollar it's 1.4 so every dollar that the employee has to pay EI on their income the employer or the business has to pay a dollar forty now it's not blue it's white and covered up with my normal gray because um, there's always rounding issues. I mean, we round the EI from check to check, whereas CRA's web thing is just said, oh, what's 144.560 times 1.4? So there's always going to be rounding issues. It's going to be off a couple pennies. This is normal. It does pre-populate that 202384, but if you did 83 or 82 or 85, you can manually change that so everything matches nicely to the remittances. Uh, same with the income tax deducted. You can see there that it is blue it's just um, of course the employer doesn't pay any of the employees income tax yay but pays their own um, but because they don't pay the employees income tax only the employee pays their own income tax so there's no uh, employer section to that it's all just how much did you take off of the employees wages and give to us and that's the total number and again matching our annual total the last pre-populated field on this web screen is the total deduction reported. I've noted it in blue too. And this is not just the total deductions from the employee's checks, but it also includes the businesses or employers' premiums that they owe on it also. So what they owe in total for the calendar year. You can see that the 24,443.64 does match the annual total on our spreadsheet, which is great. For today's example, though, um, I'm going to illustrate what it might look like if, say, the employer forgot for the very first check for Felix Puffin to also give the employer premiums just for that first check, just missing $113.37. So the next field that we fill in here is the remittances. Um, and as I said, let's say we only gave 24329 97 in 2017. As you can see, we can't say what the difference is. Um, that is going to be calculated. The next field we fill in on this screen is the social insurance number of the owner um, or the, the shareholder. Sometimes there is more than one owner, so maybe a husband and wife, or maybe it is brothers. You would put the SIN number of both of them, um, but often it's just the one. Now all we need to do is declare that we did the best we could do. I certify this return is complete and accurate. And before we can file it, we've got to recalculate. Um, as I said before, um, I was just illustrating how if you short pay your remittances, you are going to owe the difference um, or there's an overpayment um, if you've overpaid. And that uh, gets populated in these boxes here. So in this example, we owe 113 bucks more. So again, you have to certify, yep, looks good to me. And now submit to CRA for processing. And that's it. We're done, almost, again, it's submitted. But the next thing we need to do, of course, is to actually print the T4s for our employees and hand them out to our employees. So we click the print PDF version of your return. What this is going to give you is it gives you not only the T4s for each employee to hand out, you also wanna keep a copy of those T4s in the file, along with the T4 summary which is, and we've paid this much, and this is how much we didn't pay, you know, all the things that we just filled out, you'll see that. And you don't have to mail this PDF to CRA at all because it has been submitted online. In fact, when you open up that PDF, there is going to be this confirmation of receipt also included in that PDF for your files.
Now the button below, which is save your return for future import, what this does is it saves um, a special web forms file that can be read by CRA to your hard drive. So that can be used for two things in the future. The first thing it can be used for is if you need to amend this return. So if you're like, oh, I missed a T4 or, oh, I totally typed in a number wrong into my spreadsheet and I have to fix and amend the T4. What you can do is when you go to web forms and select amend existing T4s, you can simply upload that web forms file and you don't have to retype in all of Felix Potvin's stuff and all of Doug Gilmore's stuff and all of that. It's all pre-populated and that saves a lot of time. And also what you can do is you can use it next year. What you can use it for is when you go to do the following year's T4s, it's going to pre-populate all of the employee information. So you're going to not have to put in um, Felix's stuff again and Doug's stuff again, though you can like delete them and add new employees. But you can see how this is useful for if you have, especially if you've got more than two employees, if you've got five or six or seven and you're deciding to do this manually, those five or six or seven just pop back up again and you, you just put in the new totals for their uh, deductions and their earnings. So um, hopefully today's walkthrough has uh, visually shown you really how easy it is to do the web forms and how to do the payroll sort of manually if you only have a handful of employees. Uh, also probably shows you how much work it is to do it manually the more employees you have. So again, if you have more than five employees or more than 10 employees specifically, you can see how it gets a little bit more onerous um, with the amount of data entry that you have to do. And of course, the more data entry into either Excel or into CRA, you're gonna have more possibilities for typos or mistakes. So, but it is completely up to you, but now you can see how you can do payroll for free, you can do payroll yourself, and uh, you can submit T4s yourself as well. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to um, comment to the video or contact me via my website, or just send me an email at naomi at thehappybookkeeper.ca.